Hi everyone and welcome to another Mac Pro hard drive upgrade. I haven't done a dedicated video to this before, but in the unboxing video I think I did show you show you um, putting in my other hard drive. Um, but anyway, today I'm upgrading the hard drive in my Mac Pro. Um, basically this is how the hard drives are working in the Mac Pro at the moment. I've got a 640GB Western Digital Caviar Blue that came with the Mac Pro. That currently holds everything apart from video editing stuff. That holds my iTunes library, my documents, my pictures, my operating system, my applications, all of that stuff. Um, that's getting quite full because I've got a big iTunes library. I think it's about 250 gigs, 260 gigs, including uh, films and TV shows. Um, and then the other hard drive I've got is a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black. That's for video editing. That's the full one. So that will be replaced with a 2TB Western Digital Caviar Black. Um, the reason I don't get the green drives is because everyone always tells me if you're using it for storage, get the green drives, the Western Digital Caviar Greens, because they're much, much cheaper, good for the environment, blah, blah, blah. The reason I don't get them is because I need the performance of a good hard drive because I actually use it as my scratch disk. So I'm constantly... Um, rendering footage to the disc and playing back footage from the disc. It's constantly active whenever I'm video editing. So I need a good drive. And the Western Digital Caviar Black drives are very good. They've got 64 megs of cache, uh, and they're 7200 RPM. They're overall a really nice quality drive. I will be unboxing this in a minute just to show you, but I'll put the box aside to explain my plans. What I'm going to do for the first part of today is uh, put in the 2 terabyte drive leaving the other two drives in there. I will move all of my video editing stuff over from the one terabyte to the two terabyte. That will take quite a while. Um, I'll move all that stuff over there. So then the one terabyte will be empty. I'll erase the one terabyte. And then I will take out my 640 gigabyte drive and install Lion, a brand new fresh copy on the one terabyte. So I won't have the 640 gig drive anymore. Um, I will have two hard drives with three terabytes of total space. That one terabyte for my system drive will uh, be fine with my iTunes library and everything. The reason I'm not keeping the 640 is because number one, it's getting full. And number two, it's a very slow drive for the operating system drive, for the boot drive. It's got uh, 16 megs of cache. Um, it's just the Western Digital Blue drive, quite an old generation. So it's not the best hard drive. And um, yeah, so that's that. I'll have a nice spare 640 gig drive that I believe is something else down the line. Um, oh, and by the way, when I get an SSD for my boot drive, I plan on getting an SSD around my birthday time, maybe in October. Um, I'll be using the one terabyte drive purely for my iTunes library. So that'll be great. So uh, let's get on to unboxing this two terabyte drive. I hope I haven't confused you with all of the different plans and stuff that I've got. Um, but yeah, again, sorry about the background noise, I've got the fan going, it was absolutely boiling in here when I did the leopard install, I couldn't get to sleep that night because it was so hot. But anyway, um, let's unbox this drive. So I'm a little bit crammed for space because I'm working on my iMac G4, which is a lovely machine by the way, if you're interested in seeing my iMac G4, then please take a look at the two previous videos. So, let's take this drive out. Now then, this is from Amazon. Amazon always have fantastic drive posting. This is obviously an OEM. We'll use this box later on for my 640 gig drive. Here are the two ends. Now one thing I'd like to mention about this drive, it, it is the SATA 6 gigabyte a second version. Um, that's SATA 3, the next generation of SATA hard drives. Um, obviously I can't utilize that in my 2008 Mac Pro. Um, I don't even think the latest Mac Pros have SATA uh, 6 gigabyte a second. Maybe the new ones will, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, basically the reason I got the new interface, my previous one terabyte drive is SATA 6 gig a second as well. The reason I got it is for future proofing. Um, if I ever get a computer with uh, 6 gig a second capabilities, then that will be really good. Um, and also, I think I think they do do a SATA 3 gigabyte a second model, but if I remember rightly, it was more expensive for some reason because 
maybe there's less demand for it, I'm not too sure. But anyway, we can use this anti-static bag and this box to keep my 640 gig drive in after I take that out. So this hard drive is going to take a big proportion of the day. This hard drive upgrade, sorry, is going to take a big proportion of the day because I've got a lot of data to transfer. Oh, and by the way, finishing up on the uh, note about the SATA 60 gigabyte a second stuff, I believe they are backwards compatible, and if not, you can apply a jumper uh, to the drive to limit it to either 3 gigabytes a second or uh, 1.5 for the original SATA specification. Here we go, here's the drive. Western Digital Caviar Black 2 terabyte. Really nice drive. It just shows you the jumper settings there for um, stepping it down to previous SATA versions. But yeah, there you have it. Um, it's a very heavy drive. It looks pretty much the same as my one terabyte. So let's drag the Mac Pro out from underneath the desk and install this thing. So the Mac Pro has been dragged out of its cave and here it is. So let's open her up. I dusted this maybe two months ago and everyone knows how dust, wow, you can see the dust flying out as soon as I did that. Everyone knows how dusty these things get super quick. Yeah, very dusty, very, very dusty. Um, I will get some of the main dust out, like the big clods. But I'm not going to, because a few months ago I did everything. I took out the optical drives, took out the RAM, took off this cover, took out the fans, uh, took out all the cages and really, really um, got in there with the duster. Um, but this time I don't think it's quite bad enough to do that yet. I think I'll just give it a quick once over. Um, just get rid of the main parts and of course attend to the video card fan because we all know what the X1900 is like. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you the hard drive layout now that I have in this machine. So in the first bay, we have this 640 gig. This guy is eventually coming out later today. It's been a good drive. Um, little on the slow side. It's just a caviar blue. I've got a caviar blue in my gaming PC, 500 gig. Um, next one, this is the drive that I, you guys saw me buy. The design is slightly different actually. Um, I haven't applied a jumper to this drive, so I don't think I'll have to apply one to the 2 terabyte um, because this is SATA 6 gigabyte a second. So yeah, this is the 1 terabyte version. Um, I had to apply a jumper when I put it into my G5 because the G5 uses SATA, the original SATA, 1.5 gigs a second, uh, whereas the Mac Pro obviously uses SATA 2. So this is the bay that we need, bay number three. We're going to pop the um, two terabyte in here temporarily. Okay, so I've been reading the drives. Um, ignore this, I just stole a jumper off of it. I've been reading the information on the hard drives. And this one says you have to jump a, um, you have to jump a pins five and six uh, to limit the PHY to three gigabytes a second. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. But then that sounded familiar, so I took a look at my one terabyte, and it says the exact same thing, and I haven't jumped it. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to jump a. I'm not going to jump with the new drive. So let me pop this old drive back in the Mac Pro, which is behind the tripod. Now then, here we have the third drive carrier. And it's a very clever design. So, of course, you want the interface at the back. So the drive goes on like that. Now one thing I love about these cages on the Mac Pro is the screws are rubber insulated. Um, this is great for noise dampening, vibration dampening.
So there you have the two terabyte drive on the Mac Pro drive sled. Time to pop this two terabyte drive in the third bay. If you understood what I was on about at the start of the video, then you'll know that it's not staying here. There you have it. Let's make sure they're all secure. Now one thing I'd like in the next Mac Pro, not that I'll be getting one, but an addition that Apple really need to make is dust filters. It makes all the difference. It really does. Okay, so there's my Mac Pro, all sorted. That's now got 3.64 terabytes of space and we're now gonna start transferring. So this is a very, very boring and long procedure. Just as a side note, I've been doing a permissions repair on the iMac all day because it's a clone from my PowerBook. Uh, and I haven't done it on my PowerBook in ages, then it was a bit clogged. So, um, let's fire up the Mac Pro and we should get the, um, this drive cannot be read by this computer thing and you know, you need to initialize and all that stuff. So that would be good. I plan on um, backing up I can barely speak today. I plan on using this drive back here, that's a 750 gig, to back up my internal. Um, even though I don't need to, that's my secondary backup, because I have a time machine backup here. But just to be on the safe side, I will be doing that, backing up all of my uh, documents and everything like that. Okay, so the Mac Pro is starting up. So, that's the message we want. That's awesome. If you go to initialize, uh, where's my arrow? There it is. Left-handed mouse stuff, I really can't do it. And it should be down the side here. There you have it. Two terabytes WDC W2 blah 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 blah. There it is. Now then I'm going to erase that and start transferring over from my one terabyte drive. You can see how full things are getting up there. And I actually moved my YouTube exports um, over to an external drive, that external drive to be exact, because there was not enough space. So yeah, I'm gonna start transferring, and once everything's up and running, I'll uh, tell you what's going on, basically. So I've called the drive two terabyte for now. Um, I've started both the transfers that I wanna go over, um, but I might cancel the first one just so the second one goes quicker at the moment, not too sure. But that's the 190 gigs one. Um, that's all my YouTube export files and then this one the 862 gigs that's all of my video editing data so all of that stuff is going over to the drive now but I might cancel this top one and just keep to one task at one time okay to give you an update uh, here we have a 750 gig external hard drive firewire cable uh, into the Mac Pro and this top one here is all of my iTunes stuff going over to that hard drive so this hard drive is backing up the 640 gig drive you know just in case and uh, of course I'll be retrieving all of my data back because I'm doing a clean install of Mac OS X Lion um, so you know it doesn't really make a difference if I retrieve it from Time Machine or retrieve it on here um, but anyway that's looking good this bottom part uh, nearly a hundred gigs of 862.48 come on 100 gigs there you go 100 gigs um, going over to the 2 terabyte hard drive I've copied all of my pictures all of my documents um, all of my random little files all I need to do is remember to deauthorize my iTunes account and what else do I need to do oh yeah um, transfer about 190 gigs worth of YouTube export videos uh, to this two terabyte drive as well. So let me just talk a little bit about Lion. I don't normally like upgrading to the latest OS this soon, but I've been reading about Lion and there's no major problems or anything like that as far as I can tell. Um, one thing that, you know, I don't jump on the Mac bandwagon. Some people upgrade for the sake of upgrading and say, oh, check out this feature, check out that, that that's a cool animation, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> 
I need compatibility with the apps that I use daily. And I rely on some apps heavily and I've checked compatibility on various websites. Um, everything looks okay apart from an app that I use called Visual Hub. It isn't supported anymore. Um, the app developers ditched it a good year ago, I think, about two years ago maybe. Um, it's what I use to convert all of my video files to different formats. Um, there are many alternatives, but I really like Visual Hub. Um, this doesn't not work on Lion, it just says it's known to have some issues, so hopefully I don't face any of those issues. But if that's the only sacrifice I have to make, then that's cool. Um, Lion won't be a big deal to me simply because I haven't got a multi-touch trackpad, and basically the entire OS revolves around that. So it won't be very different for me. Um, I'm gonna get very frustrated with it, I know I am, because I'm so used to Snow Leopard and Leopard but hey such is life I guess I've got to learn it so um, this is probably it for this video for quite a while I'm just gonna do normal stuff throughout the day and wait for this to finish transferring okay so the main 860 gigabyte chunk is copied um, along with all of the stuff on my Macintosh hard drive backed up on this drive here that's all sorted that's very warm um, now we have the YouTube exports going over to the 2TB hard drive. So this is going to take a little while. It's 190 gigs. I was wrong, it wasn't on here. It was actually stored in my, uh, in my internal hard drive, so that's pretty cool. At least it won't be USB transfer rates because this drive down here is USB. And uh, the Time Machine drive doesn't really know what's going on, it's having a fit. Um, about backing stuff up. It's pretty much crammed to the brim now as well because it's got multiple versions of all sorts of things as I've moved them around. Um, but I plan on completely erasing that hard drive and starting Time Machine all over again once I've got Lion installed. So I'm just going to wait for this to do its thing and while it's copying over um, I'll just chill out. After it's done uh, I can yank out the 640 gig uh, move the one terabyte and the two terabyte drives over and install Lion. So all the transferring is done. I've done quite a bit of backup. Anything that I've forgotten I can retrieve from Time Machine. Um, I've saved all of my Safari bookmarks. Um, what else have I done? Deauthorized my iTunes account. Um, that's pretty much it. So this install of Snow Leopard that I've been running for seven months now uh, will come to a close. I have had no problems with it, which is, you know, uh, really saying something considering how much I use my Mac. Um, it's been an absolute solid rock to work with, and uh, I hope I don't get any issues with Lion, because I depend on my computer so much I don't want the operating system to be where the trouble lies. So, um, all I'm going to do now is unplug the Mac Pro, uh, drag it out yet again, and we're going to sort out the drives. So let's open her up again. Like I say, I'm not going to do any major dusting today. Um, when I've got some time, I'll devote a good half a day to taking this machine apart and giving it a right good dusting. So these drives are nice and toasty warm right now, which is good. There's some condensation on that or something of the, of the sort. Quite strange, but anyway. For being the same drive, they are actually quite different. They're both caviar blacks. One's a two terabyte, one's a one terabyte. But this is quite old now. This is um, about a year and three months old. So I guess they've changed it a little bit. And here's the caviar blue that we're taking out. So first things first, let's ditch the boot drive. I'll be more than happy to get rid of this drive. I mean, I've had no problems with it. It's just... It's not the quickest of drives, as we all know. The Western Digital Caviar Blue is just your 
basic normal drive. Now I haven't actually taken this drive out yet. The guy that sold it to me on eBay put this in because he said it came with a 320 but he accidentally uh, posted me a 640 accidentally. So he messaged me and he said, could you send me some extra money? And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll send you some extra money. Even though I didn't actually have any extra money to send him because I was already in debt because of how much the Mac Pro was costing me. But anyway, let's pack away this drive. If anything goes wrong with my Lion install, I can pop the... Um, I can pop this drive straight back in a new Snow Leopard again. That would be no problems whatsoever. That's why I haven't erased it or anything before I took it out. Sorry about that jump cut everyone. I ran out of space on my camera. I've got out of the habit of deleting my old videos off the camera so I've got all the way back until um, since my gaming PC build. Okay so here we have the drive. Packed away safely. There it is, my old boot drive. Well, I've just completely wasted my time. As you guys know, I bought this Mac Pro second hand and I was gonna be all, you know, um, proactive with uh, getting everything in the right order and whatnot. And uh, turns out that I don't have a bay number one. I've got two twos and a three and a four. So, uh, yeah, oh well could be worse and do you know what actually guys being as my bays are messed up anyway I'm going to use a different one for this hard disk because this screw hole has always been dodgy so I might as well just use a different one doesn't make a difference so I'm using bay number three because all the screws work on my new two terabyte hard drive. I didn't want it rattling around at all. So that's that. Um, there you go, all sorted. I've made a decision that I can use the dodgy bay, which I've shoved at the back for now. I can use this bay, the one with the missing screw for the SSD because we all know how light they are. And of course there's no moving parts. So you've got nothing really to support. So while I've got the Mac Pro open then, um, if I just rotate that, how does that look on the camera? Pretty good. Um, my plan is to do a lot of upgrades to this. I need to do a few things. The reason I've done the hard drive now is because I was literally running out of space. But there are three main upgrades that I need to do. I need to get a USB PCI card, but I mean, that's just when I get around to spending 15 quid or whatever. Um, but I need to upgrade my RAM at the moment. I've got four gigs. Um, I've got one gigabyte, a one gigabyte stick here and here, and also the same on the bottom riser card. I want to move these over here and put uh, two four gigabyte sticks to give me 12 gigs total. Now, I don't want 12 gigs or need 12 gigs, but I was thinking it's better it's better if I can see what I'm doing, but it's better if I buy four gigabyte sticks for um, major future proofing because if I buy two gigabyte sticks, bloody hell, there we go. If I buy two gigabyte sticks, then I'll run out of slots quickly and I want to keep this machine for a very long time. Other upgrades, like I've already mentioned, I want to get an SSD. Um, probably 90 gigs, 120 gigs, something like that, just for my operating system and apps. That's not essential. RAM is more important because I am starting to run out of RAM in certain applications. I mean, 4 gigs is okay, but I kind of need more, and this Mac Pro deserves more. So 12 gigs will be a real soft spot. Um, the burners are fine. I want an SSD. Hard drives are going fine for now. Graphics card. Um, it's an okay card, it's the X1900 XT uh, with 512 megs of graphics memory but I'm going to wait until the new Mac Pros are released and hopefully with them they'll bring the um, AMD Radeon 
6000 series graphics cards with them and hopefully the 2008 Mac Pro will have some support. I've heard from some people that you can put a PC card uh, uh, like a 67, a 6870 or a 6950 um, into the Mac Pro and it works just fine if you get a certain model. Um, you don't have to flash it or anything but I'm not going to trust that because it's a lot of money to spend if the card then doesn't work. So I'm going to hang fire and probably the next upgrade I'll either do is the SSD or RAM. So the Mac Pro is back in its home and we're just going to turn it on. There's obviously no OS on it so we're holding the mouse button down. to eject the drive. There you go, so if we just pop that in and close her up. So the trick is, when you want to boot from the CD, don't rush, don't fuss around. I haven't restarted my Mac since the last clip. I was just readjusting the tripod and it just did it all itself. If you pop the CD in and wait, then you don't have to worry about holding Option or holding C or doing any crap like that. It just loads up itself. And the other thing you've got to remember with booting from the CD is it takes absolutely ages. So patience is needed. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, well at the moment I'm walking around my room tidying up a little, but anyway, um, if you're not familiar with what's happening, basically you can't buy Lion, you can't buy a retail copy, um, you can't buy a DVD, that's what I'm trying to say, you can't buy a hard copy, and that's a bummer, so I burnt my own, and um, yeah, seems to be going good so far, obviously we're just at the boot up screen, but um, everything seems to be going okay, so I'll uh, proceed with the filming when uh, everything starts becoming exciting. So to all of you out there that are saying that your um, Lion DVDs that you've burnt aren't working, I have just waited probably about 10 minutes, um, maybe somewhere from 7 to 10 minutes mm -hmm. on the um, Apple logo screen. And then it sort of restarted, um, went bright white, the screen went really bright white. And now I've got this. So patience is needed. So we're gonna go for reinstall Mac OS 10. Continue. This is cool that it brings up a utilities thing. I, I haven't actually seen this installer. I haven't watched any videos on it or anything. So um, bear with me here, guys. And of course, everything is gonna take a yonk. So you're booting from the CD, the DVD, sorry, it's taking forever, so here we go, Mac OS X Lion it's perfectly normal to get beach ball and things like that continue agree agree these buttons are nice okay right then, I think we might have to go into disk utility Okay, so this has all changed quite a bit. Um, obviously, if I go to continue, agree, agree, it'll tell me that um, I can't install on the drive I want to install. This is my one terabyte drive because it isn't partitioned correctly, of course. Now, before, back in the day, you used to be able to go up here to utilities and uh, click on disk utility and enter it right from there. But now you literally have to quit the Lion installer, it brings you back to this utilities window, which is cool. You can access disk utility from here. So it's mu it behaves a lot more like an operating system on the CD, which is nice. On the DVD, sorry, I keep saying CD. Anyway, this is disk utility loading up. It's just normal disk utility like you're used to on your Mac. And here we have the drive that we want to use. So we're gonna erase it, and we're gonna call it Macintosh HD because that's what it's going to be. Raise. Good. It's using the proper partition map now, so what we're going to do is close disk utility 
and then go back to install Lion. Agree. And now what should happen is, yeah, there you have it. Newly erased Macintosh HD. Lovely. You can see my time machine back up there, my iPod, my Macintosh HD and my uh, two terabyte hard disk for my video editing. Exactly how we want it. Install. Okay, so here we're going. It's downloading some additional components. Your computer will restart automatically. About 15 minutes remaining. Okay, I'll keep you updated, everyone. This is very different to previous versions of OS X, but I like it. Change is good. I like it. So what I was saying about that taking ages, it doesn't really matter because this was super quick. And I don't know what it's doing because... It's quite confusing. The disc isn't spun up at all. I could take the disc out right now if I wanted to. Um, there you go, you can see it's it succeeded. It's strange because it went super quick. I'm talking that took maybe eight, ten minutes, possibly. And wow, it was just crazy. Um very quick. So I think it must have loaded everything into RAM and then just installed from there, I'm not too sure, but it was really quick. So um, that's pretty cool. I'm not complaining, of course. This has been quite a peculiar install, I do have to admit. Do we have any kind of intro video on this Lion stuff? I'm not sure. Pop the speakers on just in case. Don't want to miss out on anything exciting. So here's that white screen again. Okay, looks like no intro video. That's very strange. Um, just selecting the stuff that we usually select. United Kingdom, British keyboard. Uh, don't transfer now. So, this is always a fun part. Let's uh, take a picture. Um, let's go for just my eye. Looking good. Continue. London, United Kingdom, that'll do me. Thank you. Start using Lion. Whoa, okay, so that's my login screen. Ah. So there's Lion, all fresh and liony. I've got this FaceTime stuff going on. Um, ooh, sorry, you're zoomed in, aren't you? I forgot. There you go. There's Lion. I agree. Jeepers, creepers. Okay, wow. Um, we won't download that for now. Quit. Okay, so this was the installation of Mac OS X Lion. If I have anything interesting to say about it, I'll make a Geek Talk video. If not, then I won't. So everything seems to be going great. Um, yeah, this is all quite different, so I'll have to get used to this. But anyway, um, Thanks very much for watching guys, that's the successful installation of my new 2TB hard drive and also a success in installing macOS X Lion.